Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at an introduction to the third tax asset and the third tax liability. This topic gives students a lot of problems, especially in intermediate accounting or and on the CPA exam. I'm here to help you. I'm going to demystify this topic. This is an introductory topic, so please make sure to take notes and you should be good to go. Before we start, just want to remind you that if you haven't connect with me, connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and accounting lectures. Here are a list of all the courses that I cover. I have a a Facebook page as well as an Instagram page. You can follow me there. Also on my website, farhatlectures.com, I do have additional resources in addition to the lectures. You will have access to the notes, PowerPoint slides, additional practices, multiple choice questions. And if you're studying for your CPA exam, 2000 plus CPA questions. So in this session, what we're going to go over is accounting fundamentals for accounting for income taxes this topic is quite challenging for a lot of students so the strategy is to listen to the lecture listen to the lecture then after the lecture you're going to have to work multiple choice questions make sure to work the multiple choice questions because without working the multiple choice questions it's not going to be very helpful for you because you need to practice what you have learned if you don't practice what you have learned and to a degree it's useless because you really don't know if you really understood something unless you practice. So please practice, make sure to practice after the lecture. So what is the big idea here? And it's a big idea. The big idea is this. Corporation must file an income tax return. And here we are we are talking about 1120. So let's talk about 11, um, il form 1120. So let's assume we are looking at a corporation and what they do every year, they form their 1120. And what do they follow when they form the 1120? They follow the IRS rules. Now, that's on one hand. On the other hand, they have to prepare their financial statements. So companies, they have to prepare their financial statements. And when they prepare their financial statements, their financial statements are prepared for external users. Therefore, they have to use generally accepted accounting principles. So they do use different rules for preparing their financial statements. And because there are differences between GAAP and IRS, if they were the same, we wouldn't be doing this chapter now. If both IRS and uh, GAAP had the same rules, then there's no reason for deferred income taxes and deferred tax liability. But since they differ, we have to account for that difference in terms of deferred tax asset or deferred tax liability. So here we go. In this session, I'm going to be referring to something called income tax expense. Every time I say income tax expense, it means that's the gap or the financial statement expense. So if I say financial statement income tax, it means gap. If I say gap, it means tax expense. If I say tax expense, it means gap. And this is how they are used in the real world as well as the on the CPA exam. The same thing apply when I say income taxes payable. Income tax is payable. It means you have to pay it to the IRS. It means that's the IRS. So when I say this is income tax is payable, this is how you compute income tax is payable, or this is how you compute your taxes for IRS, it means I'm referring to income tax is payable. So make sure you write this down right now. Okay, if you're not writing it down, write it down because it's going to become very handy as we go through this. And this is a picture of what I just said. Hopefully it will make more sense to you. We have investors and creditors. They follow GAAP. OK, so what they do is they compute something called financial income, pre-tax financial income. Again, pre-tax financial income is a gap terminology. Then pre-tax financial income will give them their income tax expense. Remember, income tax expense is gap. Now, for tax purposes, we're going to have the term as taxable income. So notice here, financial income or pre-tax financial income or income before taxes versus taxable income. The IRS, for, for tax purposes, we use taxable income. Then we compute our taxes. Then we come up with income taxes payable. Notice there are differences between how we do things, difference, differences in terminology and differences in actual computation. So notice this is tax and this is financial statement. The reason we prepare financial statements is for external users and the Securities and Exchange Commission. The reason we compute our taxes is to pay our taxes to Uncle Sam following the IRS. There are differences between the two. Now, to illustrate this, the, these concepts, the best way is to, to work an example and go through it step by step. 
So let's start with this example. We have Chelsea reported revenue of 130,000, expenses of 60,000 in each of the first three years of, of operation. Notice, for tax purposes, Chelsea reported the same expenses. So notice, as far as tax is concerned, the expenses of 60,000 are the same. So we don't have to worry about the expenses, just keeping the example simple. Chelsea reported taxable revenue, notice taxable revenue, it means for IRS purposes, of 100,000 in 2020. So if we're looking at 2020, they reported revenue of 100,000. For 2021, they reported revenue of 150. And for 2022, they reported revenue of 140. And this is for tax purposes. This is how they reported the revenue for tax purposes. Okay? What is the effect on the account of reporting different amount of revenue for GAAP versus taxes? So let's take a look at how they reported it for GAAP as well so we can compare the information side by side. Now remember, expenses will be the same. So if you're wondering why expenses are the same for both, it's because we say expenses are both as far as GAAP and as far as IRS. So we don't have to worry about the expenses. We have to focus on the revenue. And the reason we do it this way is to illustrate the point, to illustrate the point initially that you understand. You need to have a fundamental understanding of the fair tax asset and the fair tax liability in order to understand it. Duh. Yes, you need to understand something in order to understand it. And that's the purpose. So notice, let's go through the IRS again for tax purposes. They reported 100,000 revenue. For tax purposes, for GAAP purposes, they reported 130,000. Simply put, if you're looking at this, what does that mean for you? Let's just simplify it. What does that mean? It means for GAAP, they reported more revenue. How much more revenue? 30 thousand more revenue. Remember, just to kind of tell you why would why would that happen? Just kind of it's also it's very uh, very important to understand why would this happen. Remember, for GAAP purposes, we use accrual. So we book revenue before we receive it in cash. Maybe for tax purposes, we are using cash method. So for tax purposes, we are using the cash method. Therefore, we only re report 100,000. For, uh, for GAAP purposes, we are using accrual. Now, to be more specific, let me show you the journal entry. This way you can have also, I want you to see this clearly before you proceed. For GAP, here's what's gonna happen for GAP. For GAP, let me show you the journal entry side by side. For GAP, they reported revenue. So they credit revenue of 130,000. They debited cash for 100,000 and they debited account receivable for thirty thousand, so this could be this is could have what happened. So they they add up add up end up with revenue of one hundred and thirty thousand. For tax purposes, they only report the cash. So they debited cash one hundred thousand. They credited revenue one hundred thousand, and this is what happened for tax purposes. And this is what happened for financial statement purposes. Okay, so I just want to make sure you understand this. So it, so what happened as a result of this? What happened as a result of this? Your pre tax financial income or gap financial gap taxable in gap financial income pre-tax financial income is 70,000 and there's a 20% tax rate 70,000 times 20% your income tax is 40,000 now although I did this I, I showed you this is how it gets done but this is gonna change this is a very simple illustration so this is not how you compute your income tax again not how you compute your income tax. So what I just did is incorrect. The reason, I just want to explain those numbers here, how, why you are seeing these numbers. But this is not how we compute income tax. Let me show you how we compute tax uh, for uh, for tax purposes. So for tax purposes, we have revenue of 100,000, expenses of 60,000, taxable income is 40. Taxable income times 40% will give us an income tax expense of 8,000. This is how you compute your income tax expense. Your income tax expense, if you want to write it down, please go ahead. It's very important that you write it down. So you take your taxable income. I know you're going to say this is easy, but write it down. Taxable income times the rate. Whatever that rate is happens to be. This is how you compute your income, uh, your income taxes for tax purposes. Not the same for gap purposes. Okay, but let's do 
year 21, 22, just to show you what happened overall, then we'd look at the deferred income tax asset and deferred income tax liability. In 2021, GAAP had 130,000 of income. Now in 2021, for tax purposes, we received more revenue. Notice in 2021, we have more revenue for tax purposes. It means the client paid us more in cash and less for GAAP. So as a result, our taxable income is 90000 and our taxes are 18000 For 2022, um, for GAAP, it's 130000 our revenue. For tax purposes, tax purposes 140000 Again, as a result, we have um, uh, minus 60000 in taxes. Our taxable income is 80000 and our taxes are 16000 So the 8000 here, the 18,000 here and the 16,000 here, this is what we actually send to the IRS. This is the money. This is the check that we send to the IRS. This is what we are responsible for. This is what we are responsible for. So basically, when we say income tax expense, this is also income taxes payable. So the 8,000, the 18,000, and the 16,000 are income taxes payable. Now let me show you the total over a period of three years. So this is the total and there's an error on this slide. Revenue 130 plus 130 plus 130 equal to 390,000. This is the error. Expenses over three years equal to 180. Notice for tax purposes, revenue over three years is 390. Reven expenses over three years is 180. What does that mean? It means over a period of three years, revenues and expenses are the same. They differ from year to year but in total, they are the same. In total, your pre-tax financial income is 210, your taxable income is 210, your income tax expense is 42,000, and your income tax expense for IRS purposes, 42,000. So for a period of three years, they are the same. What does that mean? It means those changes reverse. So those, what we call those, we're going to learn the, the term later, those are temporary differences. It means differences that they are different from year to year, but overall, over the long period, they reverse and they equal to each other. Okay? Hopefully, you see the big picture. Now, let's see the difference between the income tax for GAAP and the income tax for the IRS. Again, the way we computed GAAP is not accurate, but this is, it will help us just to kind of, uh, it will help us just to, for now, it will help us for now. For 2020, GAAP income tax was 14000 Income tax is payable, which is, I said, income tax expense. For IRS, we call it income taxes payable, 8,000. So notice, in, 20, in 2020, we paid less to the IRS. We paid less. Think of it this way. In 2020, we paid $6,000 less than our gap income, because this is what, what we actually have to pay, okay? Are there any differences accounted for financial statement? Yes, there are differences between the two, right? Because for if we paid less taxes, in 2020, and overall, I told you, overall, over a period of three years, they're going to be the same. So what happened in 2020, because I paid less taxes, it means in the future, I have to pay more taxes. Does that make sense? If they are this, if, if over a period of three years, and I already showed you this, that GAP and IRS are the same and I paid less this year in taxes, well, guess what? This less of taxes this year will catch up for me in future years, okay? Now, what does that mean from a deferred tax asset and deferred tax liability? It means for 2020, I have to report a deferred tax liability by $6,000. Let me explain this for you. What does that mean is this. It means in 2020, I computed my taxes, and I find out I'm paying $6,000 less to the IRS than my gap income tax. Well, guess what? That difference eventually will catch up with me. So for me to show that difference to the investors, to tell the investors and the users, look, I paid less taxes to the IRS this year, but look, I'm going to have to pay an additional 6000 in IRS payment more in future years. And to show them this, I have to book a deferred tax liability. Therefore, a deferred tax liability is born. Just a deferred tax liability is born because I'm responsible for more taxes. Again, how did I know I'm responsible for more taxes? Well, I looked at my 2020. I paid the IRS $6,000 less than what my gap income tax is. And I know that difference would reverse. It means in the future, I'm responsible for 6,000. It means 
a deferred tax liability is born of six thousand dollar which reverse in the future when is it going to reverse it's going to reverse in 2021 and 2022 let's let's see what happened in 2021 in 2021 my income tax expense for gap is fourteen thousand my income tax expense for the IRS is eighteen thousand notice I wrote a check this is the check the eighteen thousand is the check I wrote to the IRS an $18,000 check, but for GAAP purposes, I only booked, I only reported $14,000 in, um, $14, in income tax expense. What does that mean? It means that $6,000 that I said it's going to be the third tax liability, it's catching up with me. Now, since I paid more to the IRS, I'm going to reduce, I'm going to bring down that liability by $4,000. Okay. I'm going to have a deferred tax liability reduction reduced by $4,000. Now, what's happening is my liability is reversing. My liability is reversing. My deferred tax liability is reversing. In 2022, uh, my gap taxes are $14,000. My IRS taxes are $16,000. It means I paid more for the IRS. Exactly how much more? $2,000 more. Well, guess what? You remember that $6,000? 4,000 of it was reversed in 2021. The remainder, the $2,000 remainder will be reversed in 2022. Well, from a T account perspective, if you really, if you want to see it from a T account perspective, this is the third tax liability. And I'm going to show you the journal entry in a moment. So I have $6,000 this is year 2020. Basically, by putting $6,000 as a deferred tax liability, I'm telling the investors, look, I'm, I'm responsible for more taxes in the future, which indeed, in 2021, 4,000 of it reversed, and in 2022, 2,000 of it reversed, the whole thing is reversed. So notice over a period of three years, everything equal over a period of three years. So all what I'm doing is I'm accounting for the difference between my income tax expense for financial statement purposes and my income tax is payable for IRS purposes. Now let me show you how things are reported on the financial statements. And this is where this is I'm not and I'm going to tell you how to compute income tax expense. So so um, maybe I should show you the journal entry first. So let me show you the journal entry for 2021. I'm going to show you the journal entry for 2021. So I'm going to erase everything and show you the journal entry. So here's this. So this is the first journal entry. And this is important that you understand this journal entry. It's going to help you understand future journal entries. You always start with the easy one. You sh the easiest is income taxes payable. Income taxes payable. Why do I say it's the easiest? Because it's the easiest. Income taxes payable is the easiest because it's your taxable income times the rate. So it happens to be 8,000. So I would credit sorry I would credit income taxes payable income taxes payable $8,000 I'm done with this then notice my deferred tax liability went up by 6,000 well I have to book a deferred tax liability I have to credit a deferred tax liability of how much of six thousand hold on a second where did that six thousand came from it's the difference between what i paid to the irs and what i booked on the income tax return now i'm missing a debit those are both credit because they are both liabilities and they're both going up the debit is income tax expense and what's my income tax expense Think of income tax expense as a plug. Hold on a second. Did you just say a plug? Yes. Think of it as a plug. It's the third tax plus current tax. So this income tax is payable. This is what I'm going to be paying currently. So we call this current tax. This is my current bill right now. The the $8,000 is my current tax bill. The deferred tax liability is my deferred tax. So income tax expense equal to what I paid now and what I'm going to have to pay in the future. Therefore, 6 plus 8 equal to 14,000. And this is the journal entry. Write it down so I can I will show it to you on the on the how everything is reported on the financial statement. Okay, so this is the journal entry. I'll show it to you later a little bit a little bit further later down the road. So here's how things are reported on the income statement. Once again, 
I compute my income taxes payable first. Then I compute my deferred taxes. Deferred taxes, liability plus income taxes payable will give me my income tax expense. My income tax expense is my gap. And this is my uh, IRS. 8,000 is my IRS number. Okay. And the 6,000 is the difference. Where does the deferred tax liability gets reported on financial statements? It's a liability. It's a liability. Okay. Now, let's talk more about future taxable and deferred amounts. So let's talk about, about something called temporary difference. So what is a temporary difference? A temporary difference, and this is, we, we looked at it, but we, now we're going to define it, is the difference between the tax basis of an asset or a liability and its reported carrying value amount in the financial statements that would result in a taxable amount, and that would result in a taxable amount or a deductible amount. Well, what does it mean it's going to result in a future taxable amount? Well, I just showed you it's going to result in a deferred tax liability. Let me go back and show you what I mean by the, the uh, between the tax basis of an asset and a tax basis of a liability and its reported carrying value. Remember for GAAP, when I booked the entry, I said for the first year, my revenue was 130000 I debited account receivable of 30000 I debited cash of 100000 Then for IRS purposes, I said I only have cash and revenue of 100000 If you remember that entry, this is the tax entry. Now, what is the difference between, two, between these two? The difference is the account receivable. The account receivable is an asset. So I don't have the asset on tax per, for tax purposes. So I have... A basis, I have a carrying value of an asset of 30,000 that's going, that's going to do what? That's going to reverse down the road. That's going to reverse down the road. Now, if you think about it, if I take $30,000, okay, and it's going to reverse down the road. Reverse means what? Reverse means it's going to go to the tax purposes, it's going to consider the revenue to tax purposes. So it, as, it, as it's considered the revenue, I'm going to have to pay taxes on it. So what, what, what does that mean? It means I'm going to take $30,000 multiplied by some tax rate that's going to reverse at, and it gave me $6,000. It gave me $6,000. So simply put, that book basis, the $30,000, it's going to reverse down the road. It's going to reverse down the road. And remember, the tax rate is 20%. Okay? So that $30,000 eventually will turn into actual taxes. And when it turns into actual taxes, I have more taxes of 6000 It means this is a temporary difference. So let's look at the temporary difference of a liability. Okay? So the definition to be for a liability will be something like this. A temporary difference is the difference between the tax basis of an asset or a liability and its reported book value and the amount of the financial statement that would result in a taxable uh, in a taxable amount. Stop right there. Stop right there. This is the definition of a this is the definition of a deferred tax liability. It's a temporary difference that's going to give me more taxes into the future. Now, let me give you the deferred taxed asset definition, which is we did not see an example, we'll, sh we'll see shortly. A temporary difference is the difference between the tax basis or of an asset or a liability and its reported carrying or book value in the financial statement that would result in a deductible amount in the future. So a deferred taxed asset, this is a deferred taxed asset. It's what I'm going to happen in the future, I'm going to have more deduction. And what would deduction give me? Deduction will give me lower taxes. And lower taxes will give me more assets. So this is the definition for deferred tax liability. Represent an increase in taxes in future years as a result of a taxable temporary difference existing at the end of the current year. And this is the example that we worked. So what happened is, in the future, I'm, gonna, I'm responsible for more taxes. Why? Because whatever I deferred now is going to catch up with me. Therefore, I'm responsible for more taxes. Future deductible amount, which we did not look at this, it's a deferred tax asset to represent the increase in tax refundable or saved. So I'm going to either have, I'm going to either have a refund or I'm going to save more taxes in future years as a result 
of a deductible temporary difference existing at the end of the current year. When I have a deferred tax asset, which will work an example to illustrate it, in the future years when it reverse, it's going to give me more savings. It's going to give me either more savings or it's going to give me more refund. As a result, I book a deferred tax asset, a deferred tax asset. So let's take a look at this. So in Chelsea's situation, the only difference between the book basis and the tax basis of the asset and liability are related to the account receivable that arose from the revenue recognized for book purposes. So I showed you per books, I have a $30,000 of receivable. For tax purposes, I don't have any. And I showed you this when I did the journal entry. Now, this $30,000 in 2020, it would reverse. Some of it reverse in 2021. Some of it reverse in 2021. 20,000 reverse in 2021. And 10,000 reverse in 2022. So guess what? Basically, it over the period of two years, taxable amount was higher in those years. As a result, the liability reversed. Okay? Chelsea assume it will collect the account receivable and report the 30,000 collect collected as taxable revenue in the future tax return okay and by doing so she would she would start to deferred uh, she would start to uh, reduce her ta her tax liability her deferred tax liability okay so once again uh, the first tax li liability represent the increase in taxes payable in future years as a result of a temporary difference existing at the end of the current year because of of, the, of a temporary difference that's happening now and that temporary difference would reverse in the future when it reverse i'm responsible for more taxes i have a deferred tax liability okay because it's in, it because it's the first year of operation there's no deferred tax liability at the beginning of the year so we're keeping this example simple because there's no prior deferred tax liability but we're going to have to deal with prior deferred tax liability but it's very important to understand the idea okay again this is a picture of what we just did and this is the journal entry as i told you income tax expense is the current this is income taxes payable this is current taxes plus the third so the both of those current plus the third equal to income tax expense so this is this is the journal entry for 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 uh, 2020 now can you do the journal entry for 2021 can you do the journal entry for 2021 all right let me do the journal entry for 20, 2021 for you again how do you start how do i start easy simple i start with income taxes payable my income taxes payable is eighteen thousand. This is the this is the amount I have to pay to the IRS. So I'm going to credit income taxes payable eighteen thousand. Okay. Now the difference is a reduction in deferred tax liability. So I'm going to debit. I'm going to abbreviate DTL deferred tax liability. I'm going to deb I'm going to debit deferred tax liability. Four thousand dollar. Hold on a second. Didn't you tell me income tax expense is a plug? Yes, I told you it's a plug. What am I missing? I am missing income tax expense. So income tax expense for gap purposes. The difference between those two. I'm looking for a fourteen thousand dollar debit, and this is how you compute your income tax expense. So here, income tax expense equal to your current taxes minus the reduction in the minus the reduction in the deferred tax liability. Okay, let me show you the journal entry for you. So, income taxes, 18000 Easy. This is what I pay the IRS. This is my current taxes. The third tax liability is a reduction. Since it's a reduction, I'm gonna, it's going to reduce my current taxes. Okay? So, 18 minus 4. So, it's basically 18 minus, I'm sorry, 18 minus 4 equal to 14000 which is my income tax expense this is my gap number this is my gap number let's can you do 2022 2022 what do i start with start with the irs 16000 for the income taxes payable then that year my deferred tax liability reduced by 2000 my income tax expense is 14000 again income tax expense is a plug income tax expense is a plug again these Hopefully you are following, but remember, we're going to be adding balances at the beginning of the year, which we'll deal with that shortly. Okay, so this is the T account for deferred tax liability. I created $6,000 of a deferred tax liability. In 2021, 4,000 of it is, is reversed. In 2022, 2,000 of it is reversed. Therefore, my balance by 2022 equal to zero, equal to zero. 
Okay, let's take a look at the balance sheet and the income statement, balance sheet and the income statement. So here's what's going to happen on the balance sheet and the income statement for 2020. I'm going to have on the balance sheet income tax expense payable, deferred tax liability. On the income statement, it's going to be this plus this equal to 14,000. In 2021, I'm going to have income tax payable of 18,000, deferred tax liability of only 2,000. Deferred tax liability only of 2,000. So notice what happened. There was a reduction of 4,000. So 18,000 minus the reduction equal to 14,000. Notice there was a reduction. 2022, my income tax payable is 16,000. My deferred liability went to zero. It means it went down by 2,000. So 16,000 minus the decrease equal to 14,000. Now you might be saying, why did you do, do, do this, the decrease, and 18,000, and you did 18,000 plus six? Well, 18,000 plus six because there was zero and it went from zero to 6,000. So I took 8,000 plus the increase of 6,000 and just in case to be to be consistent. This is how I come up with the 14,000 for 2020. For 2022, it's 18,000 minus the decrease. So it's 18,000, but my liability went down. So I reduce it from my liability. So I reduce it from my liability. So let me show you specifically how things will appear on the income statement. For example, for um, for 2020, here's how you ch this is how you would show your income statement. On the income statement, income tax expense is, compo is composed of two components: current and deferred. The current portion is eight thousand. The deferred portion is six. Okay, and I had to pay in total fourteen thousand. I had to pay in total fourteen thousand. I have to pay in total 14000 Okay, let's look at another example that deals with deferred tax liability. So let's look at another example of deferred tax liability to make sure we understand this. So South Carolina Corporation has one temporary difference at the end of 2020 that, would re that will reverse. It's a temporary difference and cause a taxable amount of 55000 in 2021, 60000 in 2022, and... 75,000 in 2023. What does that mean? If it's if I'm going to if I have a difference and that's going to reverse and cause a taxable income in the future, it means I'm looking at a deferred tax liability, although it's here, but let's assume it's not here. Hopefully you understand you're looking at a deferred tax liability. Starfield pre-tax financial income, translation gap income for 2020 is 300,000 and the rate is 30% for all years. Now this is important because later on we're going to be changing the rate. So make sure the rate is very important. There are no deferred tax no deferred taxes at the beginning of the year. So this is basically a simple example because there are no deferred taxes at the beginning of the year. Compute taxable income and income taxes payable for 2020. Well, let's start with taxable income. How do we compute our taxable income? How do we compute our taxable income? Okay, so for 2020, for 2020, are they giving us taxable income? They're not, but we have to compute taxable income. How do we compute taxable income? Gap income, they, they gave us gap income of 300,000. That was given to us. The gap income is 300,000. And they told us, and they told us there is a difference, there is a difference of 55, 60, and 75. So in future years, 55 plus 60 plus 75 would reverse. What does that mean? It means this year, those are not taxable. It means to compute our taxable income, we have to deduct those three amount, 55,000 plus 60,000 plus 75,000. And those three equal to 100 and 90,000. So I'm going to deduct 190,000. And why, why I deduct this? Those are the amount that are going to reverse. So they're not included in taxes this year. It means my taxable income equal to 110,000. Well, if my taxable income equal to 110,000, I'm responsible for paying 30% in taxes. 100,000 times 30% equal to 33,000. I just I just figured out my taxable income. I just figured out my taxable income, okay? I just figured out my taxable income. Now, 
uh, let me show you the let me show it to you on the second slide because it's easier to show it to you but hopefully you understand this so first I went um, I did the first thing I did is my 2020 I said gap is 300,000 temporary differences of 190 which is the the reversal my IRS taxable income is 110 times 30 percent gives me income taxes of 33,000 therefore what you do is you credit income taxes payable of 33,000 immediately then you would say in future years in 2021 50 I have more $55,000 more I have $60,000 more in taxes and $75,000 more in taxes for, for from the year 2021 55,000 times 30 percent I'm gonna have more taxes of 16,500 from year 2022 I'm gonna have 18,000 more in taxes and from year 2023 I'm gonna have 22,500 more in taxes so this plus this plus this is what I called the third tax liability an increase from zero zero to fifty seven thousand so my deferred tax liability was zero and it increased to fifty seven thousand five hundred so I credit deferred tax liability fifty seven thousand now thirty three thousand plus fifty seven thousand those two together equal to the income tax which is a plug this is how you compute your income tax I know this is funny but income tax expense for financial accounting purposes is a plug. It's the result of the current plus current and deferred. I'm not going to say plus. Sometimes we have to we have to deduct. Therefore, current and deferred. Sometimes we have to, depending what the deferred is. Okay. So it's the current. It's the current and the deferred. I'm not going to say plus because you don't always add. Sometimes you have to deduct if there is any reduction in your deferred tax liability, or when it comes to the deferred tax asset, it's the opposite. So we'll hold on that. Okay. So let's take a look at another example. Let's take a look at another example and see how this all fits together. So hopefully you are getting to wrap your head around the fair tax liability. During 2020, Cunningham estimate its warranty cost related to the sale of microwave oven to be half a million, paid evenly over the next two years. For book purposes in 2020, Cunningham reported warranty expense and related estimated warranty liability of 500,000 in its financial statement. Let's translate this into simple English. What happened is the company sold an item and as a result, they sold a warranty with it. And from financial accounting statements, hopefully you know that you have to book a warranty expense of half a million and you have to credit estimated warranty liability of half a million. So for GAP, this is what you have to do. And you learn this. Now, for tax purposes, what do you have to do for tax purposes? Nada. Nothing. You don't have to do anything for tax purposes. For tax purposes, you cannot take, uh, you cannot estimate your warranty liabilities. You, you, you have a liability when you actually pay for it. What does that mean? It means for book purposes, for gap purposes, you have a liability of half a million. Okay? And for tax return, you did not report any expense. So this expense did not, did not exist on the tax return. And this liability don't exist on your balance sheet for tax purposes. Okay? So now what's going to happen in the future, in the future, you are going to have a deduction. So in the future, when these customers come back and ask you to repair their product, you are going to have an expense. But for gap purposes, you will not have an expense. It means in the future, in the, in the future, in the next two years, this half a million would reverse. So let me show you when it reverses what's going to happen. In future years, you're going to have a future deductible amount. It means in future years, you're going to have a lower taxable, a lower taxable income because you have you have lower taxable income than gap income because you're going to have more deductions. So in 2021, you're going to have more tax deduction 2022 more tax deduction total you're going to have half a million of tax deduction what does that mean it means in the future you have more savings what does that mean it's in the future you're going to have to book now a deferred tax asset why because if in the future you have more savings you have a deferred tax asset so when Cunningham pay for the liability it report an expense that's deductible for tax purposes Cunningham report this future benefit. So they report this future benefit now. They report it now. How do they report it? They report it as a deferred tax asset. They report it as a deferred 
tax asset. And this is how a deferred tax asset will be born. So we'll have a deferred tax asset and we'll book and that deferred tax asset half a million times whatever the future rate is. Let's assume it's 20%. That's 100,000. Therefore, we have a deferred tax asset year 2020 of 100,000. This is how a deferred tax asset is born. Okay. Let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at the definition of a deferred tax asset. A deferred tax asset represents the increase in taxes saved in future years as a result of a deductible temporary difference. So that warranty is a deductible temporary difference that exists at the end of the current year. Let's take a look at this example to see how it all works. Hunt Company has revenues of 900000 for both 2020 and 2021. It also has operating expenses of 400000 for each of these years. In addition, Hunt accrues a loss and related liability of 50000 for financial reporting purposes because of a pending litigation. So what happened? Hunt has to book a contingent liability. What does that mean? It means they debit um, lawsuit loss of 50,000 and they credited the uh, estimated um, liability, estimated or it's contingent, contingent liability of 50,000. So they debited a loss, which is they take a for, for, for gap, this is for gap. For gap, they have a loss and a liability. For tax, what did they have for tax purposes? Nada, nothing. Because they, for tax purposes, you cannot deduct a future liability. You cannot deduct the contingent liability. Hunt cannot deduct this amount for tax purposes until it pays the liability. Expected in 2021. So this is this was 2020. Guess what? In 2021, they're going to pay the lawsuit. Therefore, then that's when they take the deduction. Okay. As a result, a deductible amount will occur in 2021 when Hunt settles the liability, causing a taxable income to be lower. Okay, so let's take a look at the picture first. So this is gap. Gap, we have revenues, expenses, minus the lawsuit. Our pre-tax financial income is 450. For tax purposes, we have revenues, expenses, notice, no lawsuit for 2020, taxable income of half a million times 20%, income taxes payable of 100,000. Can you do the entry? Can we do the entry? Can you do the entry now? Can you do the entry now? Let's do the entry. So for 2020, you will say income taxes payable, income taxes payable, 100,000. Okay, income taxes payable is 100,000 coming from here. Now, what's the difference between income taxes? Uh, what's the difference between income taxes payable and what I have to pay in taxes, well, the difference technically is $10,000. The difference is $10,000. The difference is $10,000. Well, this is a deferred tax liability of $10,000 because in the future, I'm going to, um, and I'm sorry, I apologize, it's not a deferred tax asset. Uh, the difference is a deferred tax asset of $10,000. In the future, I have a deduction. And what is the deduction? The deduction equal to 50000 times 20%. So in the future, I'm going to be saving, when I pay that lawsuit, I'm going to be saving $10,000. Therefore, I have a deferred tax asset. Therefore, I book my deferred tax asset of, of 10000 Now, all what I have to do now is book income tax expense. What is my income tax expense? It's my current portion and my and my deferred portion. My current portion is 100,000 and in the future I'm going to be saving 10,000, so I'm going to be reducing my taxes. Therefore, my income tax expense is only 90,000. And this is how I compute income tax expense. It's 100,000 minus 10. It's the current portion minus the increase in deferred tax asset. So, so, if I have a deferred taxed asset, I'll take the, if a def, simply put, if a deferred taxed asset went up, I'm going to take my current minus the increase in deferred taxed asset, minus the increase in deferred taxed asset. If I have a, a deferred tax liability, if I have a deferred tax liability increase, deferred tax, I'm sorry, the DT, DTL increase, I'm going to take my current 
sorry, my current taxes plus the increase in the third tax liability to get to my income tax expense to get to my here income tax expense okay so make sure you know these two formulas you make sure you know these two formulas if I have a deferred tax asset and it went up I'll take the current minus the increase if I have a deferred tax liability and went up I'll take the current plus the increase. Now, the opposite is true. If my deferred tax liability goes down, I'm going to take the current plus. If it went down, it's the current plus. And I showed you already what's going to happen to the deferred tax liability. If it's if it went down, it's the current minus. Okay? Copy this, those formula down. Okay? So the deferred tax asset is 10000 And the beginning was zero. Okay? So the deferred tax asset... At the end of the year is 10,000, the beginning was zero, therefore there was an increase of 10,000. There was an increase of 10,000. So the current tax expense is, is uh, income, uh, income tax expense is 90,000, which is the current minus the increase, minus the increase in DTA, minus the increase in DTA. Because the beginning was zero, so from a T account perspective, this is DTA, the beginning was zero and the account went up to 10,000. It means there was an increase of 10,000. If it's an increase, I take the current minus the increase in DTA, in the third taxed asset. And this is the journal entry. So income taxes payable is 100,000. Remember, we, what we did is we took half a million times 20% for tax purposes. Then for the 10,000 here, we took 50,000, which is the lawsuit that we're going to be deducting later, times 20%. The tax rate will be 20%. It gives us a deferred tax asset. So our income tax expense is the current. This is the current. And this is the deferred. So we'll take the current minus the, def minus the increase in deferred tax asset. Okay? Now, in 2021... 2021 when it actually reverse when it actually reverse what's going to happen is this when it when it actually reversed when it actually reversed remember i had 10000 at the beginning of the year when it reverse i'm going to reduce that 10000 down to zero therefore dta will go down dta will go down well dta will go down let's see how it how it how it works from a um, Let's see how it works. So 2021, gap for gap, I have 90, 900,000 in revenues, 400,000 in expenses, the lawsuit already deduction taken. I have pre-tax financial income of half a million. I'm going to stop right here. Let's go to tax purposes, 900,000, 400,000. And now I paid for the lawsuit, 50,000. Therefore, my taxable income is 450. 450 times 20%, I have to pay the IRS 90 thousand dollar i have to pay the irs ninety thousand dollar i have to pay the irs ni only ninety thousand dollar because i paid them the prior year one hundred thousand i paid them more so that ten thousand dollar difference it reversed because it reversed i have to reduce my dta remember when dta goes down i'll take my current which is ninety thousand plus the if, if dta goes down if dta which is it's going to go down i'll take the current plus the reduction so 90,000 plus the reduction of 10,000. So notice what's going to happen. Income tax expense equal to 100,000, which is the beginning was 10,000 and the ending was zero. So it went down. It went down by 10,000. It went down. DTA went down by 10,000. Therefore, I will take my current plus the reduction in DTA will give me my income tax expense. And this will be my journal entry. Income tax is payable 90,000. This is 450 times 20%, 90,000. This is a reduction. Remember that 50,000 that 50, lawsuit, it's going to have to reverse. And it re as it reverse, my DTA, my DTA, my deferred tax asset will go down. As it goes down, it's going to increase my income tax expense because for gap purposes, I cannot take that $50,000. Okay, so it's going to increase it. So let's take a look from a, from a presentation perspective. For 2020, your income taxes payable is uh, 100,000. Your deferred tax asset is 90,000. 
in 2021, you pay the IRS 90000 and you no longer have income tax asset. For 2020, this is your income tax expense on the income statement. The current portion was 100000 minus the increase in the deferred taxed asset, minus the increase in the deferred taxed asset. Okay, in the in the subsequent year it reversed. In the subsequent year, what happened? Current was ninety thousand. Then the third tax asset was a plus. I added ten thousand. Therefore, income tax expense was a hundred thousand in twenty twenty one. I'm not sure if you're going to see it. You don't see twenty twenty one, but I just showed it to you what happened in twenty twenty one. Okay. Okay. Notice the ninety thousand is right here. Your income tax asset goes down as it goes down. I add, I add the increase in deferred tax asset. Therefore, income tax expense equal to one hundred thousand. So this is what happened in twenty twenty. I created the deferred tax asset in twenty twenty one. It reversed. Therefore, the balance is zero. Therefore, the balance is zero. Let's take a look at another example for deferred tax asset. Deferred tax asset. Okay. So we have. Columbia Corporation has one temporary difference at the end of 2020 that would reverse and cause a deductible amount of 50,000 in 2021, 65,000 in 2022, and 40,000 in 2023. It's a reversal. It's going to cause a deductible amount. It's going to give me a deferred taxed asset into the future. Columbia pre-tax financial income for 2020 is 200,000, aka gap income to 200,000. And the tax rate is 34% for all three years. There are no deferred tax taxes at the beginning of the year of 2020. We are still keeping things simple. Columbia expected to be profitable in future years. You're going to see why this is important later on. Compute taxable income and income taxes payable. Again, you start with taxable income and income taxes payable. Can you compute taxable income? Hopefully you can. You have 200000 for GAP. Now, as far as the IRS are concerned, you did not take, you cannot take you are losing a deduction this year of 50,000, of 65, and 440. So in total, those three, 50,000 plus 40 equal to 90, plus 65 equal to 155. You are losing a $155,000 deduction this year that's going to reverse in future years. It means if this is GAP, your IRS must be way higher than GAP because you're not taking those deductions. Therefore, I have to add those future deduction for this year. Therefore, your taxable income for IRS purposes for this year is 355. Once I find my taxable income, I just did 355. I'll take 355 times 34% to find my income taxes payable. So let's show you this. Gap was 200,000. My future deduction amount 50, 65, and 40 equal to 155. 200 plus 155 equal to 355. I take 355 taxable income times the tax rate. Give me my income taxes payable right here. Income taxes payable 12700. Now, in future years, 2021, 2022, 2020, 2023, I'm going to have more deduction, more deduction, more deduction. So the 150, it would reverse. As it, as First, let's compute the future benefit. 50,000 times 34, 65,000 times 34, and 40,000 times 34. So for 2021, it's going to give me a tax saving of 17, 22,113,600. ,000, I take those three together and I book my deferred taxed asset that I'm going to have for the future three years that's going to reverse. The next three years, that deferred taxed asset would reverse, but I book it now. I book it, this is 2020. I book it in 2020, but it would reverse in 2021, 2022, and 2023. Now I'm left with my income tax expense. My income tax expense is a plug, so I'm looking for a debit. But specifically, it's my current taxes, current taxes, minus my increase in DTA, because DTA went up minus the increase in my DTA. And if you learn this, minus the increase in DTA, it's going to make your life easier when you have a prior balance, when you have a prior balance, okay? Again, don't worry, we're going to work with prior balances, but this is basically an introduction to this topic. The, the, the last thing I'm going to discuss here before I'm going to send you to work some multiple choice questions is devaluation allowance, okay? A company should reduce the third tax asset by evaluation allowance if... So learn the rules. You may see this on the exam. If it's more than like, more likely than not, it will not realize some portion of all the deferred taxed asset. More likely than not means a likelihood of at least 
uh, more than 50%. Now let's translate this in simple simple English. Remember, when you book your deferred tax asset, what are you saying? You are saying in the future, I'm going to have a future tax savings or future tax deduction. This is what I'm saying. But guess what? If you are not going to have any profit in the future, if you're not going to have any taxes, how good is your deferred tax asset? It's useless. So if you think you are not going to be using that deferred tax asset, it means when it reverses, it's useless for you because it's only good if you have a taxable income. Guess what? You have to create a valuation allowance. It means you have to reduce your deferred tax asset. Reduce your deferred tax asset. When do you reduce it? When there is 50% a chance or more, you are not going to realize it. Okay? And the best way to illustrate this is to actually work an example. Jennifer has a deferred tax asset account with a balance of 75 at the end of 2019 due to a single cumulative temporary difference of 375,000. Uh, a uh, simple English, we have a DTA account and it has $75,000 as a result of some temporary difference of 375,000. Okay? At the end of at the end of the 2020, the same, the same temporary difference has increased to a cumulative amount of half a million. So this 300,000, it increased to half a million. It increased by 120. It increased by 125,000. Taxable income for 2020 is 820. The tax rate is 20% for all years. No valuation account related to the deferred tax asset is in the existence at the end of 2019. Okay? So what happened is, this temporary difference, it's going to increase by 125,000. As it increase, your DTA should also increase. Why? Because you have more temporary difference, that's a future future deductible amount, then it means you're going to have more um, deferred tax asset. Now, assuming that is more likely than not, that 15,000 of the deferred tax asset will not be realized. What are we saying here? We are saying, let's assume after we book the entry, after we book the, that increase of 125,000 increase from 375 to half a million, let's assume, let's assume that 15,000 will not be realized, will not be realized. What does that mean? It means write the DT, DTA down, but before we write it down, let's do the, let's book it, let's book it. So here's what's going to happen. In 2020, we have financial income of 695 minus the temporary difference. It's going to give us taxable income of 820, which was given to us times 20%, 164. So we credit income taxes payable, 164. Then the deferred tax asset is 125. They told us it's, an, it's going to increase from 375 to 500,000. It means an increase of 125 um, times 20%. That's going to give me 25,000. My DTA will increase by 25,000. My income tax expense equal to my current minus my increase in my deferred tax asset. My income tax expense equal to 139. So I just booked my DTA. Then they told me, guess what? 15,000 of your 15,000 of your DTA. Now let's take a look at DTA here. DTA. When we started the year, it was 75,000. Then this year we booked an additional 25. So DTA as it stands is 100,000 deferred tax asset. What they told us is, guess what? You have 100,000, guess what? 15,000 you will never realize. So what do you have to do? You have to create an allowance account, an allowance account. And what's an allowance account? Basically a reduction in your deferred tax asset. But don't reduce DTA, you would credit an allowance for deferred taxes, which would reduce, it's a contra asset. So you would reduce this asset, an allowance for deferred taxes of 15,000, and you debit income tax expense. Remember, so here's, here's, here's a good tip here. When your deferred tax asset goes down, your income tax expense goes up. When your deferred tax asset goes down, your income tax expense goes up. Notice what happened here in the prior entry. In the prior entry, it's the opposite. In the prior entry, notice when your deferred tax asset goes up, your income tax expense goes down. Okay? You can say that when every time you're, you are increasing your deferred tax asset, your income tax expense goes down for tax purposes. Goes down for tax purposes. Okay? Let me make sure I said this right. Yes, as your DTA goes down, your income tax expense goes up. As it goes up, 
your income tax expense goes down. That's right. I want to make sure I'm saying this right. And this is how you show the allowance on the balance sheet. On the balance sheet, you would still show the deferred tax asset of 100000 which was 75 plus 25 and you would reduce it by the allowance amount of 15000 which will give you a deferred tax asset of 85000 Now, this is a solid introduction to the deferred tax asset and the deferred tax liability. In the next session, what I would do is I will work multiple choice questions covering this topic. So make sure you practice the multiple choice. Make sure you master the topic before we move on. As always, don't forget to visit my website for additional resources. Consider subscribing. It's an investment in your career. Good luck.